so one of the subs just asked me if I can do a video talking about reincarnation. So yeah, I'm happy to do that now. Obviously, uh, in Christianity and in the Bible, it tells us that reincarnation isn't real and that we shouldn't believe it. And that's something that I don't agree with because I believe that reincarnation is real and that the darker extraterrestrial races that try to kind of control and overrule this planet, they have been a contribution to creating the matrix grid that's over this planet. And when we die, they try to force us to reincarnate and then they wipe all of our memories and so we can't remember who we are and then we just start a new life on earth and we are trapped in this endless reincarnation cycle the reason i believe why christianity doesn't want us to believe in reincarnation is because they're trying to protect christians because if they don't believe that it's real and that it can't affect them then it's not going to affect them so that's fair enough but do i believe it still exists yes it still does exist and I'm not going to turn a blind eye to it. You just need to have the right knowledge and a different perspective. I do believe in a lot of the Christian principles and what is written in the Bible, but I'm also spiritual. So I'm not like a normal in the box Christian. So, you know, when we die and we, our spirit exits our physical body, our soul, our spirit exits our physical body, we are controlling things with our mind just as you would if you were astral traveling you would be controlling everything with your mind because you're in the spiritual world and you can no longer physically move so you have to control things with your thoughts in the energy world so when we die and then our soul spirit exits our body we have to think to exit the matrix or to turn away from this bright light that we see that bright light that people see where they think it's going into a higher realm that's not that's a trap that the dark beings created because they suck us into that and then they wipe our memories so we completely lose our whole consciousness and forget who we are because that's what they want and then we keep reincarnating on earth with no recollection of ourselves because if we were just a spirit that came into a human body then why can't we remember who we were before we did that on earth? Why can't we remember any of our previous lives? I have had a lot of visions in the past of myself in past lives. Spirit and the high realms has shown me visions of myself in past lives. I've channeled a lot of past life stuff for myself and I've had it confirmed through confirmations also with the relationships, some of the relationships I have around me. And some of my friends who are intuitives, they also do that same work and we've confirmed it. I've also done it for other people and confirmed it. For example, I had a lady once where I was talking about how she used to live in Egypt and that the, um, like she was, she like some type of um, rubble or rocks uh, had fallen on her. And so this created a deep fear of claustrophobia for her. And like she didn't like she was claustrophobic. She didn't like being in enclosed spaces because of what happened to her in this past life. And I, she didn't tell me anything about herself at all. And she's like, yes, yes, that's true. Like I do have claustrophobia. And it was because of what happened to her in that past life. So there's just one example. So I truly believe because I've seen the visions of myself in past lives. I remember I've, I've seen one vision of myself, I think in the 1800s. And I was a woman in that life. And I had like this... Um, like the, I was dressed in the type of way that they dressed with I had like that that kind of bib thing that they tied around them their heads I don't know what it's called sorry and then like a big sort of puffy dress that puffed out here and a bit of a tight corset and I didn't I don't like I never paid attention to history in school and um because I just didn't like it I guess so but I didn't know what they looked like in the 1800s I had no idea how they looked so I saw this vision that came to me of myself. I knew it was myself. And so then I looked it up on, on online, um, on the web browser. And I saw that the way that the people dressed back then was exactly identical to my vision. So I knew that that was true. So things like that, you know. So I believe that 
we need to be careful when our spirit exits our body when we die that we turn away from that white light so you have to think turn away from the from the white light and then you have to think exit the matrix so then you can exit the matrix and you can go to wherever you want to go to to a different planet or something because there's different realms there's different planets there's there is the heavenly realm there is the hell realm and there's different planets but i believe obviously the heavenly realm is a wonderful place to be but there's a lot of it that's programming and a lot of it is to keep people stuck or confined in some type of way i could be wrong but that's just what i think and when we look at history as well of the world notice how on earth we tend to have plagues like we have like this plague or something every hundred years like this massive plague and it just keeps repeating that repetitive cycle of having that so it's kind of similar in a way with past lives what like what happens here on earth with repetitive cycles something happens with you in a past life with your love interest and their partner you have this love triangle that keeps repeating over many past lives and it always repeats that your love interest's partner kills you or something like that you know so it's like the, the, the this repeats over many lives just like the earthly cycles repeats and people have to break the patterns they have to learn the lessons they have to overcome the soul traumas and this and the sins and the things that lead them to do that pattern again because i believe that somehow people carry a consciousness or some type of um something from their past life which causes them to to replay that and and when you get sucked into that tunnel of false light deception and you have these dark beings that approach you that pretend to be spirit guides or from the light they try to convince you to reincarnate and have a certain life to make up for your previous mistakes so that is also why certain people enter into their life with um a certain their life plays out a certain way because of what they did in the previous one so all of it's just like it's not supposed to happen we shouldn't have beings manipulating us getting us to agree to stuff that's not their authority to do that over us the only authority is the almighty creator to be to be ruling over us so these false beings that appear and want us to make up for things in this previous life that's all rubbish so you know i truly believe that people do reincarnate um i think it's good that they teach christians not to believe in it for, for obvious reasons but people still need to be aware of like the white light tunnel of deception and how we get tricked a lot of people get tricked when they die and 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 leave their body um and you have to really use discernment with what beings appear in front of you when you have died to make sure that they're really from the light and that they really are having your best highest good interests uh because we all have a sovereign will to choose uh where you know we, we have a sovereign will to choose and i think that people forget that because of all the programming and and things like that that we get taught so you know a lot of the bible was rewritten there is some things in there i believe which is used to control people or to to um to to like uh program people so you just have to use discernment the word the gospel is is a wonderful truth to live by and to guide you because it's solid but there is some things as well that clash um and and just kind of clash with each other conflicting because there's a lot of false gods in the bible which sometimes people worship that i believe is not the true almighty creator it's not a pure source like yahweh is not coming from the divine it's a fallen one um and a lot of religious people tend to worship that so anyway that's a whole another tangent now so i'm gonna leave it at this now because it's almost getting to 10 minutes but i hope this has helped you um given you some insight you do not need to allow yourself to be reincarnated you can choose what you would like to do because you have a sovereign will
so I wanted to stitch this to part one. This is going to be about a completely different topic, but I was just guided to mention a few things. So I wanted to talk about doing forgiveness and healing. So a lot of times when people have been through a very traumatic event in their life or something that creates a lot of damage to your soul, you tend to run away from it and you don't really want to heal it or you don't really want to face it because you can see and you can feel that the pain of it is so strong that it feels like if you're going to face it, you actually might die because it's so intense, the pain and the suffering that you're feeling. But it is still important when you're ready. Obviously, you don't have to do it right after the event has happened, but it's still important when you are ready that you do work on doing a forgiveness therapy session for that. And you might have to chip away at it over several times and several sessions, unless, of course, you've got someone super anointed that can just give you that really intense shift. But, uh, I mean, you can always give yourself that straightaway shift from prayer. It's just about your faith. And, of course, at the discretion of the divine granting that request or healing for you. But, yeah, my point is uh, sometimes we push things away and we use coping mechanisms because we don't want to deal with that pain because it feels like we just are not going to be able to cope if it does come to the surface and you might not be able to cope and maybe you're just going to need some time like I said but when you do face it you will find that you feel a lot lighter after you do release because there's entities attached to your unforgiveness and your emotions which is draining your energy which is pulling you down so you're going to feel a lot lighter and a lot more energetic once you do do the forgiveness work and you're going to feel a lot more peaceful as well in your spirit and you're going to uh, see the situation through new eyes so don't be afraid of writing out your feelings writing out what is bothering you ask the holy spirit and jesus to bring up any repressed uh, feelings around the situation and then see what comes to mind see what visions you get and then start doing some journaling about those feelings so you can write down whatever is going to come to your mind so you can write down i'm angry because whatever and you might find that it's a little bit extreme i mean don't be scared of what comes out whatever comes out on that piece of paper it might be a bit intense a bit extreme and that's all right because it's the first step it's part of the process and you're just going to get better over time it might be a little bit crazy at first but then as time goes on you're going to get calmer and you're going to view the situation from um, a different lens again so try doing that exercise ask the holy spirit and jesus to bring up any repressed emotions and then see what comes to mind see what visions you get see what comes out and then you're going to journal around why you're angry why you're upset and then you can also do a cathartic letter to the person uh you can write to them uh what you want to say to them and you can ask the holy spirit and jesus to help you forgive that person and give it to them picture yourself giving all of that energy to jesus and the holy spirit and picturing that person uh absorbed in god's love and then picture yourself forgiving that person and you can also write an apology letter from them to you and if you're good at doing writing you can see if like if you're good at doing writing from jesus you can see if jesus is going to tell you a message through that person and you can write that down as well so you can bring that through and that will help the situation as well. So, so there's multiple steps there of, of identifying, getting those feelings out, um, you know, picturing that person's in, absorbed in God's love, picturing yourself giving that, that whatever you're holding onto away towards Jesus and the Holy Spirit, give that energy to them, let it go, and picture that person healed in a healed state. And then you can focus on doing an apology letter from them to you, and you can also um, do an apology letter to yourself, even if you want. But of course, you don't send any of these letters. 
um, and you know it doesn't have to be perfect spelling or anything and just let whatever needs to come out come out on the piece of paper and you'll find that that will be really helpful for you.